Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is Mark chapter 14, verses 32 through 52. The Reverend Sean Denzer is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. The Continuation of the Passion According to St. Mark And when they had sung a hymn, they went out from the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said to them, You will all fall away, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though they all fall away, I will not. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he said emphatically, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. And they all said the same. And they went to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be greatly distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch. And going a little farther, he fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. But one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. And Jesus said to them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to capture me? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not seize me. But let the Scriptures be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. And a young man followed him with nothing but a linen cloth about his body, and they seized him. But he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. This is good Lenten advice. But do not misunderstand Jesus. He's not suggesting that if you pray a little harder now, things will be easier, that your temptation will all be taken away from you. No, pray for this, that you would not enter into temptation. Pray that you would not dive headlong into it and be lost. Pray that Satan would not have his way with you. Pray that God's will be done, that you not fall into temptation's deep and sleepy grip. Consider Christ in the garden. He who knew no sin and did not give in to temptation, prayed, Thy will be done. And for his praying, he was tempted more and more. Then he was betrayed. Then he was taken With Jesus, we see that Satan afflicts us with many temptations. As as Christians, we desire to discipline ourselves in daily prayer, repentance, 
renewal as we ought to. But we will also then daily find ourselves harassed all the more. It is necessary to pray that we would not enter into temptation. We must also take up our Lord's prayer from the garden, Thy will be done. Because God's will is to break and to hinder every evil plan and purpose of the devil and the world and the sinful flesh. It was the will of God with Jesus that he be taken so that the devil and the world might be overcome. His cross could not be avoided. Let the scriptures be fulfilled, he says. Your will be done. For you, dear Christians, the cross also cannot be avoided. For how is God's will done but by breaking and hindering every evil plan and purpose, not only of the devil and of the world, but also of our sinful flesh? And this means that God's will is done by breaking and hindering you. He must smash all of the idols in which you trust. He must show you wherever your will is not with God, but with Satan and his world of darkness. And the deeper that you gaze into the mirror of God's law, the more that you confess your sins for the sake of the absolution, the more darkness you are likely to discover. You will find that sin is not even what you thought it was. It is almost always much worse. Why is it that such testing and temptation and cross-bearing must persist for Christians? Why is it that even this good breaking and hindering that God does to us in examining ourselves or in confessing our sins must be so painful? Why must we always find more sins whenever we look at our lives according to His commandments? Well, it is actually because God is very merciful and gentle with us indeed. If we knew and recognized all at once the great depth of our sin, the extent to which we have hated God, and even how completely and fully our will is against His will, well, then we would be obliterated for all of the magnitude of it. The full depth of our darkness would swallow us up, and God's goodness would overwhelm our sinful minds. As one prophet said, we would be undone. But so our Lord is gentle, and He patiently lets out just a little bit of His truth to us at a time. Out of grace and mercy, not out of wrath, does your Lord give you what you have asked for, that His will be done, not yours. Such asking is the groaning of His Holy Spirit, whom He poured out richly on you in water and word. No unbeliever would dare to cry out against himself like this. No ally of Satan would ever pray this Lord's Prayer with so dangerous a petition as, Your will be done. No, dear Christians, only faith, however weak, could pray like this. Faith given in spite of your drowsy failures. Be comforted then, O sleepers, and awake. For your Lord Jesus has called you by name, and you are His. His Spirit has been at work in you. The good and gracious will of God is done entirely without your prayers, and we see in this gospel how. It is done by His prayers. Your King curbs flesh and blood and every ill that sets itself against His will. He won't let anyone else's will steal you from Him, not even your own. And so He strengthens and He keeps you firm in His word and this faith 
in the midst of all trials. He uses crosses and afflictions for your good, that your firm grip on him would become even tighter. And when affliction and temptation and trial at last are complete, when he affords you his comfort even in the face of death, then at last you shall be, as Romans 8 says, fully conformed to the image of God's Son, crucified and dead like him, but in perfect shape for resurrection like him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us for chapel. Today we pray for the congregations of the North Wisconsin District and their pastors, together with all schools, teachers, and church workers. We also pray for the Reverend Herb and Marky e. Birch, who serve the Lord in Belize. The broadcast of chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.